Today, I'm just going to talk about one of the debatable topic, which is, is DevOps really a misinterpreted and misunderstood in the IT industry? If you are into the infrastructure or the cloud space, then you might have heard the term DevOps. Companies are hiring the DevOps engineer. Students are training to become a DevOps engineer. But in reality, what a DevOps is and what a DevOps engineer actually do in the DevOps role? Let's rewind a bit and try to understand the DevOps term and how it emerged. So DevOps is just a philosophy and a set of practices which tries to bridge the development team with our operations team. So with the time what has happened, our software system become a little bit more complex and we needed a faster execution as well as delivery time. And there was a need of a certain set of engineer which can speed up this particular process and that's where the DevOps came into picture. In old days or in a traditional software development lifecycle process, there were two teams. One is the development team and one was operation team. So the responsibility of a software development team was to build and ship the product to the infrastructure team. An infrastructure team was responsible for deploying that product onto the production environment. But there was a big problem in this whole process. So development team is an expert on the application code which they have uh, shipped to the infrastructure team and infrastructure team is really an expert on deploying the stuff onto the production But if something goes wrong into the application code which development team has shipped then infrastructure team was really struggling to fix those issues and These both the team the development and the operation teams were working in the silos and these silos created a lot of confusion, miscommunication, which eventually leads into longer execution and delivery time. So that's where the DevOps was born, to bridge the gap between the development and the operations team. So if there is something wrong with this whole SDLC cycle, then DevOps engineers were prompt to inform the development team as well as take care of the operation stuff as well. They have their own pipelines, they keep on monitoring those pipelines, they try to fix the issue, they try to communicate with the development team if there is any application code level issues. And also not only that, they are also responsible for keeping the production up and running 24 by seven so that there is a maximum availability and high availability of your application so that your end users are not suffering with the downtime. So in a nutshell, this DevOps is just a culture and a feedback cycle so that your software development lifecycle process is as smooth as possible and your customer gets a continuous deliveries of your new features. So the vision of the DevOps was not to create a new role, but to foster the collaboration between the development and the operation team. But Companies started adopting this DevOps culture quite quickly and then we started seeing quite, quite a lot of job posting on the job board. And these specific job or the DevOps engineers roles were really helping the companies to efficiently deliver the changes to their end customer efficiently and effectively. Let's talk about the key responsibilities in the DevOps engineering role, which is really crucial and needed to be a successful DevOps engineer. So the first in the list is continuous integration and continuous delivery. And in short, we also call it as a CI-CD. And as the name suggests continuous, which means we need to deliver the changes continuously. And how it begins? We need to take a code from our developer machine and to ship it to the production in an automated fashion without any manual intervention. So that's what the CI CD principle says. And nowadays there are lots of tools which companies use to enable this CI CD pipelines. And the tools which I'm calling about is Jenkins, GitHub Action, GitLab. So these are some quite a popular tool which companies are using to build their continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline supported by the DevOps engineer. So on a ground level, what does this pipelines do? So as I told you, these pipelines takes the code from a developer machine and then it ships to the production environment. 
But before the code is getting shipped to the production environment, it has to go through certain stages. And these stages are like a test environment, staging environment, and then the final production environment. And this test and staging environment where this code is tested, validated, and then once it is validated, satisfied our actual request, then it is getting shipped to the production environment. And these all stages are automated so that a person or a developer doesn't has to manually intervene in this whole process. He can build the code, he can just submit the code or push it to the GitHub repository or a versioning system and from there this pipeline takes care of that particular code and then ship it after doing that certain testing validation to the production environment. Next in the list is infrastructure as a code or in short we call it as a IAC and it is one of the needed skill if you want to be a successful in the DevOps engineering role. Because with the help of infrastructure as a code you can set up the virtual server, databases, file storage, firewall in the form of code. So for example, if you want to spin up a new Linux machine or a Windows machine, then you can just write a few lines of a code and those lines of a code is responsible for spinning up a new virtual machine which can be a Linux, which can be a Windows machine. So uh, infrastructure as a code skill is the skill which a DevOps person uses in a day-to-day -day job. So it is a really needed skill and which is really a key responsibility if a person who is working in the DevOps area. The next key responsibility I'm talking about is the monitoring and the system reliability. So once the code is shipped to the production environment, then the next task starts, which is to monitor the health of that particular code in the production environment. So a DevOps person has to have that skill to effectively monitor the health and the status of our production environment. And to do that, he has to rely on certain tools. For example, monitoring tool I'm talking about is Grafana. Prometheus, AWS CloudWatch. So these are certain tools which enables them to monitor those uh, production application 24 by seven. And if there is something wrong with those application in the production environment, then these monitoring tools will alert the DevOps team, hey, this is the problem, you should go and fix those issues or at least inform a development team to take a necessary action. The next key responsibility I'm talking about is the security. So till now we have seen like we have seen the continuous integration delivery pipeline, we have seen infrastructure as a code, then we have seen the system reliability and monitoring. And now once the code is there in the production which is up and running, then we need to take care of the security of that particular application which is running in the production because there are many malicious actors which are present uh, all across the world which can bring down your application. And that's where DevOps person or a DevOps engineer has to take care of the security of that particular application. And the security means there could be potential attacks on that application, so you need to take care of those rules, your firewall rules, also, you need to manage your secrets uh, safely so that you are just deploying the application, then you are not just exposing those secrets out to the world. Those are managed properly. You have proper SSL encryption. You have proper certificate. So all those things which safeguard your application in the production environment. So you just need to take care of all those aspects. So that's where the security also becomes a crucial responsibility in a DevOps engineering role. Now the next question is like why the companies are still insisting on hiring a DevOps engineer? So of course the first thing is they want to bridge the gap between the development and the operation. But it is not only limited to that, they want to hire a certain individual who really have an expert skill in the CI CD building the automated pipeline doing the automation, 
writing the infrastructure as a code, securing your application in the production, and also doing the active monitoring of those applications so that they can be the first point of contact if something goes wrong into the production uh, environment. From the company's perspective, a DevOps person can really accelerate their automation and the delivery life cycle. And nowadays, like companies are looking out for an individual DevOps engineer in the individual team so that this culture can be embedded directly into the team. And this culture of continuous integration, delivery, and those pipeline automation can be built within the team. And those uh, holistic approach can be followed across the organization for more quicker deliveries. Let's talk about the pros and the cons of a DevOps engineer role. So I'll start with the pros and the first thing is if a person is a working in a DevOps role then he has a really wide skill set and what do you mean by the wide skill set? So he knows like how to build your CI CD pipeline, he knows how to build the automation, he knows how to work with the infrastructure as a code, he knows your cloud infrastructure if you are working in AWS, Google Cloud or Azure and also if you are working on on-premise then he knows like how your whole infrastructure of your data center looks like. On top of that, he's also securing the application, the security aspect, and also taking care of the monitoring and the reliability of your application. On the other side, there are certain downsides associated with the DevOps role. So a DevOps person has not only managed the SDLC lifecycle, automation, and production infrastructure. So if you are working in an enterprise environment, so you are not only working on a single application, you have a multiple applications serving in the production environment. And when shit hits the fan, then you are really in a stressful situation, which can eventually lead to the certain burnout. Because uh, managing those application is one thing and also keeping yourself up to date with the latest technologies and tool is another thing. So you just need to juggle between these two and these can many times lead to a burnout and a very stressful situation. So this is one of the cons which is always associated with a DevOps engineering role. Now you might be wondering that what's the future of this DevOps role? So the companies like uh, Netflix, Google, Meta, they are just trying to embed this DevOps culture into the individual application team so that these practices are embedded into the each and individual application team so that they don't need to create a cross-functional team which is only responsible for setting up or fostering this DevOps culture. So instead of that, each individual team is responsible for contributing towards this DevOps culture and practices. And also instead of having a single DevOps team, they are just trying to hire like a site reliability engineer, cloud uh, engineer or experts and also an automation expert. So these are few more segregation in this DevOps area which brings this culture or this can lead to a potential future or the change in this DevOps culture and the practices. So those are my thoughts on how the DevOps concept is misunderstood and misinterpreted. I would like to hear your opinion also, like what are your thoughts and opinion on this DevOps role and culture. So please put down any question or any of your thoughts or any of your input into the comment section and I would really like to uh, read through those comments and your suggestions and inputs on the DevOps culture and the practices.